Hey, good morning everybody, it's Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop and our Sunday evening vlog. So what do we have for you this weekend? Well, this weekend, uh, we've been working, uh, this is I think our third week. This is the finishing end of our CNC engraved and fabricated kitchen table for my beloved. For those of you just coming on board, basically, I have an, old, uh, an older log style kitchen table that was massive for our home. We wanted to decrease our footprint, so I sold it. We ended up uh, buying the materials that I needed to construct a little 4x3, which would suit my wife and I a little bit better in our own home and provide us with a little bit more room in our small dining area. Okay, well, to kind of recap, we just popped this off the spoil board a few days ago. I told you that uh, when we ran this last week, I ended up screwing it from the underside. The reason for that was we ended up taking the entire spoiler board. There was no way that I could get a, a T-slot uh, clamp in my track. There was no way. I covered the whole spoiler board. So we screwed it from the underside. We left it in there. Basically what I did, without touching the edges, I ended up taking, and you, you saw it in the video, we used these little wire brushes, these fine wire brass brushes, or these little stiff nylon brushes, like a toothbrush, and all the engraved area, I sand while it's still in the spoiler board. We hit it with some high pressure air to knock out the loose stuff, and I take my orbital and I go over the face of this with 80 grit. And I still leave it in the machine. All right, well what we've done, uh, what I did yesterday, Saturday, was I came up and we put two coats of airbrush paint. Now, I'm no airbrush authority by any stretch. I bought a Pache Talon. It's a double action airbrush. They're made in Wisconsin. I told you, whenever possible, I try to keep work here in our own country, so I try to buy American whenever possible. They're a nice airbrush. They're very versatile. You can get different size tips for different size spray patterns. The only thing I'm interested in is getting my black paint from this airbrush onto these engravings. That's it. I don't need the detail or the control of the high-end eye waters, the three, four, five hundred dollar up airbrushes. I am looking to get black paint into my engraving. No more, no less. I use Cretex Wicked. It's an acrylic... Uh, it's an acrylic enamel, very strong paint. That's the reducer for it. I mix it 50-50 in the cup on the airbrush. We give it a quick shake, and then we start spraying. This stuff cleans up with uh, literally with a reduced glass cleaner and distilled water when you need to clean your, your gun. What we're going to do is this has now been sprayed. It's been airbrushed. I gave it all night to basically sit up and dry. I had, uh, I had an event that I had to attend last night, so we just let this dry. What I'm gonna do this morning is we're gonna sand any of the overspray off, and then what we're gonna do is if I were to hit an area with my orbital, I'll just go back and we'll touch it up real quick. Point being is I didn't wanna make you ladies and gentlemen sit through me airbrushing this. It, it's really, it's even more basic than paint by numbers. There's one color. Your, your paint and your reducer is mixed at a ratio of 50-50. Get it into the engraving. Try to do it with as little overspray as possible. You get better with practice. But if you do get overspray, it's not the end of the world. We're going to sand that off here momentarily. Then what I'm going to do tonight is we're going to let all the dust up here in the shop settle. I'm going to let the dust settle, and by God, we're going to pour this thing, and we're going to sit up here with it for a little while. So, we'll pour it, and I think we'll get a nice pour. The humidity's low, we'll put a little fire in the shop, just to get the temperatures up, to get this stuff to uh, set up and kick good. Uh, the base, the base is out of the camera at the moment. I'm going to basically drop an old piece of Harvey backer on the floor. I'm going to put the base down. We're going to hit the base up with some universal sanding sealer from uh, Bullseye. Once the uh, sanding sealer on the uh, white cedar post base that we built dries, I'm going to hit it with one of these ultra fine scuff pads. And then we're just going to throw a couple quick coats of Ace brand polyurethane two to three coats on the base. That's it. We're not using any sanding sealer on top 
of the tabletop itself. I have had adhesion problems pouring the epoxies in the past with, uh, with some of the sanding sealers. So we're just going to sand it, touch up anything with the airbrush paint that we may accidentally sand off. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I keep this project as simple as I can. If you wanted to, you could by all means, once this is sanded, you could go in, you could airbrush maybe in a little color for your water. You could add some green to the trees, some gray to the rock face. Granted, we walked you through this design, but if you're going to go out and you're going to mill it, then by God, it's yours. I want you guys to do with them whatever you see fit. Make them, make them the way you want them. And if you can, I'd love to see what you build. Send us over some pictures. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pause the video real quick. We're going to get this sanded, and I'm going to get the base with some sanding sealer. Just get that, uh, get that going. But we'll be back momentarily, so please stay tuned. There's more to come, folks. All right, hey, everybody. While we're back, here's our finished product. <laughs> Excuse me. We basically took, as we told you, I took my orbital. I did have it hooked up to, uh, to my shop vac. So I didn't want to create a lot of dust in here, and we're going to get into that in just a second. I basically sanded off the overspray. I did not nick any of the areas, so no touch-up was necessary. Just a real basic, real clean. The missus has seen it. She's very happy with it, so feel free to go in, take this, and download it now that you see it. Uh, make adjustments to it however you'd like, all right? Now, what we're going to do is... The base is right in front of you, you can't see it, but we've put a sanding sealer on it. All I'm going to do for this evening, or for the moment, is I'm going to quickly scuff it down with one of those sanding pads. This is all set to go, but I just wanted to set it up for everyone to see. We're going to let the particulates kind of settle up here for a little while. Put down a tarp. This stuff is going to make a mess. This is our two-part uh, EnviroTech light pour. I have a little bit of extra left over, but I think this one kid will do it. And then for our base, it's going to be as simple as our, uh, our local hardware store, our Ace. I'm going to put two, three coats of poly on the base. We're going to call it good. But this is literally this simple, folks. A little bit of airbrushing, let it dry overnight, sand off the overspray. We're ready to pour the next day, okay? All right, well, everybody stay tuned. We're going to let things quiet down up here for a little bit. And then I'm going to take and uh, we're going to get this poured tonight. Let the shop warm up for a little bit and uh, let things settle. All right, stay tuned. We've got more to come. All right, everyone. Well, we're back. First of all, we were going to pour this Sunday night, but between the weekend and the hours that I've, I've put in over the last few days, uh, I opted to wait and do this tonight. It is Monday. Uh, main reason being is because I didn't want to have to sit out here late, late, late last night, as tired as I was, risk falling asleep, something happening to the point, now I'm not able to correct it. So, basically what we've done thus far today is uh, the frame has got the sanding sealer on it, we've got our first coat of polyurethane, it's pretty well set up. However, the polyurethane that I bought says to allow 48 hours between coats, okay? I'm not going to wait another two days to release this video. So, in a couple days, what we're going to do, we told you, we're going to take our little soft pad, I'm going to scuff everything down when it's dry, I'm going to apply a second coat, I think two coats of poly will be fine for, uh, for my base, because there is a good heavy coat of sanding sealer on here. The next thing I'm going to do, is we are ready to drop and pour this. What we're going to do is if I was going to secure this top down tonight, which I'm not, but I'm also not going to make you ladies and gentlemen wait another two to three days to get the video up. All I simply do is set my top, I measure from my sides, and I try to get everything as symmetrical and as proportionate as possible. Whatever I've got sticking out on this side, I want on that. Same thing around so that there's proper symmetry. Okay, what we are going to do is we're just going to take this and we're just going to set it on top because I've got this base right now nice and level. So I have no worries of when we go to do the pour, which is the next thing, 
I'm not worried about the poor running off one end because we don't have things level. It only takes a second to slap your uh, to slap your forefooter or whatever you have on it. Yeah, it looks good. Everything looks good. I've already done this. All right. So the only thing I want to make sure is that I've got enough overhang all the way around so that when this stuff does start to drip, it doesn't hit my legs on my base. That's truly it. What we're going to do, and the other thing I'm going to recommend too, uh, have everything pulled that you're going to need just before pouring. I've got some, uh, I got some razor blades here. We're going to work it over the edge. Once it kicks and it sets up, I take a razor blade, I go along my bottom, and I cut off the excess. If it dries, well now you've got to sand it off. That's no fun. Uh, as far as spreading the medium, I've used everything from these little foam brushes, okay, to, to help move the, the medium around. However, they do start to dissolve in the epoxy, and you don't want the black foam in your material. So keep an eye on them. If they start to get weak or break up, throw it, get another one. I also use business cards, and I can spread the, uh, the resin, the two-part resin here, this pour-on bar epoxy. Uh, I can spread it with a business card. Have everything laid out you're going to need. Now, the ideal temperature for this stuff is between 70 and 80 degrees with a lower humidity. Let me grab my glasses here. They mention in these kits, don't mention, uh, don't mention, yeah, don't mix more than a single half gallon kit. I honestly wouldn't mix more than two pints together at a time. You've got to stir this for two minutes straight. This particular kit that we purchased here, oh, is good for, uh, the same is good for eight square feet. My table's four by three, but it's not perfectly square. That's okay, we have a second kit right here. You mix this 50-50, you want to stir for two minutes, non-stop. Do not use anything mechanical to mix this with, it's going to create more air bubbles than you want. We'll be dealing with those once we start pouring. Uh, some people use an open torch. I use a, just a cheap Wagner heat gun. And in two minutes, once you have everything thoroughly mixed, immediately pour and start working it. I can tell you from my experience, you got about a half an hour. All right. This is why I did not want to pour this late last night because I was afraid that as tired as I was, if there was a mishap and something went wrong, well, in this case, uh, and I'm sure I'll get some questions, Steve, what do I do if in the event something goes wrong? A, you can try to do a repair. You can scuff the whole thing down with a very fine grit sandpaper and then do a repour. That doesn't always work. This is why last night I opted to wait till today because if something were to go wrong on this, I'd throw the piece out and I'd remill re it. I really, really don't want to go that route. All right, once we have it poured, in about 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to notice bubbles are going to start coming up. This is part of the chemical process of this, uh, this epoxy doing what it does, okay? So we'll work the bubbles with a heat gun. But what we're going to do is we're going to pause the video real quick. I'm going to mix up two parts. <coughs> Excuse me, in this container, it's just an old Clorox. Nothing special. I found it in the recycling bin this morning. Reason being is a lot of people mix in solo cups. Well, in a solo cup... You've got ridges, walls, nooks, crannies. I'm afraid I won't get all of the chemicals. So I use a bucket that's got very smooth sides, completely smooth, flat bottom. Because like I said, you're going to sit here and crank on this for a couple, two, three minutes to get it thoroughly mixed, okay? We're going to pause the video. I'm going to get this mixed, and when you come back, we're going to start pouring. I'm going to walk you through the steps as to how I pour. And we've, got a, we've also got a big tarp down. This tarp is going to... All right, everybody, you hang tight. We will be right back. All right, folks, well, here we go. Keep your fingers crossed for me, please. Because I have had these uh, not go the way I've wanted them to. And I already know that I'm going to need to mix up another kit. There's no way around this. I'm going to get as much out of this bucket as we can because I want to try to reuse this container if at all possible. I can already see air bubbles starting to form. Not the end of the world.
Alright. I'm going to start out with a business card. But yeah, we're going to certainly need to use that other kit. We do not have enough for full coverage here. Alright. The nice thing is, though, with using this stuff is that it is auto-leveling. So as long as we don't have this table pitched up too high on one end, this stuff will do okay on its own, leveling out. But as I told you, I don't believe that there's enough here on this one application. So we're going to have to take, and we're going to need to mix up another, another jug. But I'm going to try to spread this out as, as good as I can. Pay attention to some of your pockets uh, because I want to make sure that I don't have any voids because I really do not want to go back after a full cure and, and even think about pouring any of this, okay? No, 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 no. That would not be fun. Like I said, we'll deal with the air bubbles here momentarily. I've just got to get uh, as much of this stuff spread as I can. I work from the center out. We're going to pause again real quick because I've got about 30 minutes. I told you we've got about 30 minute window with this stuff. But I'd rather have it on here real thick than real thin. So I'm going to take and uh, we're going to pitch this can, this business card here. I'm going to mix up another batch and we're going to pour, okay? All right, we will be right back, folks. All right, round two. I've got good coverage down to the base of the water. And I'm not worried because we do have another one. Now, getting to your edges, kind of the same deal. We can, uh, we can work it, but I want to do them last if I can help it. I didn't mean to get this over here because I don't want it to run off on the floor because I may need still a pretty good portion of the, uh, the material. All right. I got to fill up this pocket right here. And I mix in my bigger jug and I just use this smaller one because it's, it's a little easier to handle. All right. Again, now, the only other thing I can recommend is when you get this on the floor, you're going to more than likely get it on your shoes tonight. Now, when you go to pour yours, uh, if you opt to go this route, so take your shoes off outside. Do not go bringing two-part resin in the house. Wife will thank you for it. It's got some really good adhesion, so I'm, I'm happy with that right now. And what I have found is when this stuff doesn't want to work, you'll notice when you go to spread it. And if you are spreading it, and it starts to turn thick or clumpy, well, you're coming down to the end. You really need to move and move quickly. Like I said, you've only got about 30 minutes to work with this stuff, in my opinion. Temperatures and other things may buy you a little more time, but... And the business cards are working so good for me that, heck, I'm not even going to bother with the, uh, the foam brushes. All right, right now, I'm not seeing any holidays that I can see yet. Uh, we've got a nice depth over here on this pocket. And it's just a matter of now we just work the material. I want to try to have everything as even uh, you know, because of a pocket over here that's 50 thousandths deep or so, the, uh, obviously the epoxy is going to be deeper here, but I, I do want some type of conformity. So, what I'm going to do here is we're going to mix up our last batch, make sure that I have enough to do my edges. But again, each time we do this, you're going to hand mix for two minutes. Try not to forget that one. But I think we're going to be good here with this. Now, right now, we got drips that are starting to come off. Uh, my window is narrowing, obviously, thus far. I like the way this looks. It looks really, really sharp. 
All right, now the last thing we're doing, I don't know how good you can see it over there, maybe not at all, but I will be around the corner. I've got one of these small foam brushes, and I am literally slopping the medium on. There is no rhyme to reason here. I'm keeping my cup because I want to catch any of the over, uh, overture, but I do want it to run. I want gravity to do its own natural thing here. In the meantime, this stuff is dripping all around me, so it's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. And I can assure you that I am wearing about as much of this as the job is, so I should be good and dirty before I go in tonight for dinner. Now what I was left over in this cup, I'll give it a final little stir and we'll just drop it in the middle of the table, spread accordingly. This stuff, I told you, it will kick and when it does, we'll go around with a blade and we will chop off any of the excess on the table. The other thing that I'm trying to be very careful of is as I'm slopping this on, I'm not getting any over on the legs of the base. Not that it will hurt anything, I just don't need these big runs in my base. One of the last things we're going to do is we're going to try to stay away from the edge of this so as I don't get my shoes caked full. I'm looking at any of the knots right now. And we got knots that have some, some big cracks around them and whatnot. I'm going in and I'm filling them. I want to make sure that if there's uh, room in there for epoxy, well, by God, it gets epoxy. Alrighty, there we go. Now we're just going to randomly put the last of this down. I will do what I can to spread it out as evenly as I can with a credit card, a credit card, excuse me, with a business card. And our little, uh, our little disposable brush here is pretty much gone. Now we still have a little bit of uh, materials left over, just enough so that if we had a client come in with maybe a small little plaque, uh, or something along that lines, well, we can accommodate them. Just take and keep working this stuff. This is all I'm going to do. We're going to work it, we're going to work it. Now, last thing we do, this is all in. We've got a glorified mess in our hands, but that's okay. Goes along with the job. We're going to take our heat gun. I can see a couple big air bubbles. I better down well make sure that I got my close to 50s on or I'll never see it. Keep your cord out of the way. You don't want that dragging through your, through all your hard work. And then as soon as I hit this, all the little air bubbles are going pop, 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 pop. Hold your gun about six inches away. Do not hold it at any one spot. I'm sure that the, uh, if this stuff you can go over it with a, with a lit torch, nonetheless, uh, if, if an open flame doesn't light it, it doesn't mean I want to see if it's going to work with a torch, okay? And literally, all these little air bubbles right before your eyes are going pop, pop, pop. And we can go back and forth. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to keep looking at this over the next 20, 30 minutes because these bubbles can appear, like I said, for up to a half an hour, sometimes an hour. But I think that our weather outside is pretty good. Uh, we're about 74, 70, 75 degrees in the shop. I ran into humidifier last night because I, in fact, wanted to keep the humidity down. And this is, this is truly about the hardest part of the whole job, in my opinion. You've gone through everything. You've done everything to make sure your engraving came out right. Your sanding is good. You've done everything that you, as an engraver, can do. So, why, uh, why now risk doing anything that could cause some exponential damage, alright? Alright everybody, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to work this until everything kicks and I can take my razor blade and cut my bubbles off the edge. But this is it, and then what we're going to do tomorrow 
Uh, so we're going to set the top aside. I may just leave this whole project up here. I'm not milling anything until Wednesday, so I may just have a, a hiatus for tomorrow and work in the office. That might be a little, might be a little better anyways. But we're just going to keep working our bubbles. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Get rid of them. That's it. If you feel there's something I left out, there's something you're not clear on, please, please, please do not hesitate. Shoot me an email. I promise I'll get back to you as promptly as I can. But there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. She's poured. She looks like this beautiful piece of glass. And all I've got to do now for the next little bit is I just got to keep up with the bubbles that, that form, okay? No reason for you to ride shotgun with me on that, okay? Once this is done, I told you again, we'll measure to get our top symmetrical. And then we'll screw it from the underside of our little 1x6s that we put in. And our frame is going to get hand scuffed and one more coat of uh, polyurethane, but that's it. So we're going to sit up here. I'm going to babysit. I hope all of you have a, uh, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you Wednesday for the midweek shout-out, everybody.